the Islamic, Islamic Center, Center of, of Tennessee, Tennessee present. Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'firu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudillalah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih وَلَتَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ تَقُوا رَبَكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَخْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدٍ فَإِنَّ أَسْدَاكَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرُ الْحَدِّ حَدِّ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَالشَّرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٌ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ First of all Ramadan Mubarak, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this month a means of forgiveness for you. May he make it a means of nearness to him for you. May he make this the month where not only do you learn to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that he deserves to be loved and worshipped, but may you find that love return to you from him, Jalla wa Ala, Azza wa Jal. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'm going to, never do I do so, but apologize beforehand. <clears throat> I have a very bad cough and a cold and a fever and I'm working through it, alhamdulillah. But uh, it will be kind of scratchy maybe towards the end. Uh, Insha'Allah ta'ala, I'll be taking plenty of rest between the talks to make sure that I can give you the best of my abilities. Bidnilahi ta'ala. And today, I'm going to be short quite short insha'Allah ta'ala because we all know what we are here for we know what I'm here for in the month of Ramadan it becomes kind of a symbol that when Yusha shows up in Ramadan it's time to make the masjid whole again through the funds that are needed so you can get used to seeing that insha'Allah ta'ala I want to be very simple today as well so that because a week of Ramadan has passed you know we've gotten kind of into the fasting mode yet again and maybe now you're starting to start to feel the effects of keeping yourself from the food and the drink and things of that nature. So I'm going to try to keep it very simple for you, inshaAllah ta'ala, so that it can be something that you can take with you to benefit you. It doesn't matter how eloquently I can get up here and speak to you, how many verses from the Quran I can roll off, how many ahadith from the Prophet salatu wasalam, and deep uh, understandings, etc. What matters is what you take home with you, what I am able to deliver to you, that you can take home with you and put into practice. That's what matters. This is why the Prophet ﷺ kept his teachings to his companions simple and on a level where they not, could not only understand it, but they could put it into practice. This is the way the deen is. It's based on simplicity. Simplicity. There's a very beautiful <clears throat> statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ibrahim. Upon which I will leave you this beautiful reminder and message and hopefully a mind frame that will change this Ramadan for you, insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La in shakartum la azidannakum. La in shakartum la azidannakum. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah says, If you are grateful to me, if you have shukr towards me, I will give you more. I'll give you more, I'll increase you. If you are grateful to me for what you have right now and for what I've given to you so far, if you're grateful for it and you're thankful for it, then I will give you more. I'll give you more. But if you become ungrateful for what I have given to you and you do not give thanks and you are not satisfied with everything that I have given you, 
inna adabi la shadeed. Then indeed my punishment is severe. This is about two attitudes today. Number one, being grateful. Having the idea of shukr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being thankful. And the opposite of that kufr. Being ungrateful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This idea is reiterated time and time again throughout the Quran. And many times you will see the two side by side. You will see gratefulness and ungratefulness. And you will see shukr associated with iman. And of course we know that ungratefulness, kufr is associated with kufr. Disbelief. We have to take this time in Ramadan. This is a time where we are denying the body in order to feed the soul. We are denying our body that which if we denied it incessantly non-stop, we would die. We would die. But we deny it just enough. Just enough to where we realize, insha'Allah ta'ala, that we have the abilities, have the abilities to overcome what the body wants in order to give it what it needs. In order to give it what it needs. That's what Ramadan teaches us. To deny the body what it wants, to learn how to have that abstinence. This is part of what taqwa is that we'll talk about, insha'Allah, I think tonight, insha'Allah, about taqwa in the month of Ramadan is about abstaining and staying away from what the body wants and it desires and the soul wants and desires that are negative in order to give it what it needs. So while we are in this mode or frame of mind in this beautiful <coughs> month of Ramadan, <coughs> let us think and reflect on what is it do I possess or what is it that has happened to me that I could be grateful for. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. If you spent your days in this month of Ramadan remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that you have to be grateful and thankful to Him for, you would not find enough hours in this month. You wouldn't find enough hours in this month. If you were to spend the nights of Ramadan standing in front of your Rabb, worshipping Him, thinking about the favors that He has given to you in your life, you would wish it would never end. There is reasons why our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to stand at night until his feet would crack and bleed. When he was asked, why do you do this to yourself? You are someone whom Allah has already guaranteed the highest ranks of Jannah, has alleviated for you any mistake you could ever make. Why do you put yourself through this torture? And the Prophet ﷺ responded, Should I not then be grateful? Should I not then be thankful that I've been given so much by Allah that I should worship Him more than all of you? You see, the Prophet ﷺ understood. He understood what gratefulness and thankfulness was about. Abu Bakr عنه, was a man who was known by his soft heart. By the fact also that he could barely pray without breaking into tears. Subhanallah. This was his sunnah. His everyday mentality was that when he wouldn't stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would break down. And this was a complaint even made against him. When the Prophet والسلام, was in his last illness, <coughs> And he couldn't get up to lead the salah. He tried and he tried and he tried. He called for Abu Bakr and said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the salah. And it was responded to him, Yeah, Abu Bakr is too soft. He cries too much. He cries too much. Every time he prays, he cries. He's going to be leading us. He's going to be crying. We're all going to be crying. The Prophet ﷺ got upset and said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the salah. And when the people were a bit hesitant to do that, the Prophet ﷺ tried to get up himself to go and make sure that this happens. And it is said when he stood up and looked out his window and he saw that Abu Bakr was already leading the salah, he smiled. He smiled. You see, Abu Bakr had a life that was full of gratitude for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet والسلام, died, Abu Bakr was of the first to remind us 
when everyone was in confusion. When Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, a man whom earlier in his life hated the Prophet والسلام, so much that he had a sword in his hands ready to kill the Prophet والسلام, now, now he cannot even imagine to think that this man is gone. He said, no, he is like Musa السلام, who left and went to be with Allah and he'll return to us. And if any of you says he is dead, I'll kill you myself. He couldn't, he couldn't take it. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa radha, Aisha radiallahu anha, his daughter said he came into the room where the Prophet والسلام, was laid covered with a sheet. He lifted the sheet, he smiled at the person whom he loved the most in this world, kissed him and said, you're even more beautiful now than in life. Walked out and he told the people, oh you people, if you worship the Muhammad, no, the Muhammad is dead. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if you worship Allah, know that Allah is Al-Hay. He is alive and he never dies. You see, this is a man who understood the relationship between the human being and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What is it that you have to be thankful for? What is it? If you decided today, if I told you as homework for tonight to go home now, or when you make it home today after work, take out a piece of paper, start numbering and writing the things that you have to be thankful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, how long would it take to complete that list? I don't think I'd see any of you for the rest of the weekend. Where do we begin? What about the life that Allah gave you? Do you have that to be thankful for? Absolutely. Absolutely. What about the air that you breathe? Do you have that to be thankful for? Absolutely. When Dawood alayhi salam, there's a story about Dawood alayhi salam, he was pondering and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about gratitude and thankfulness. And what does it mean? Allah revealed to him, Dawood take a breath. He took a breath and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that is the least of my favors to you. That is the least of things from me to you that you have to be grateful for. How many times do we take a breath every single day? And that is the least of Allah's favors to mankind. What else do you have to be grateful for? We cannot begin to enumerate, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, His favors. Which of the favors of Allah would we deny? You see, this is part of the attitude of Iman. Iman is not about just believing that Allah exists. You see, the Meccans believed that Allah exists before Islam entered and completed itself upon Fath al-Makkah. During the time when the Prophet والسلام, was with a handful of followers, they believed in Allah. Allah says it in the Quran, if you ask them who sends down rain from the sky, they will surely say it is Allah. The Christians believe in Allah. They believe in a creator. The Jews believe in a creator. There are many people out there who believe that a creator of everything exists. But you see, they don't have this attitude of gratefulness because they either do not give him the worship that he asked for or they give that worship to someone else or to something else or to some other idea. This is truly, truly the deepest attitude of ungratefulness. This is why it's called kufr. Because Allah has given you air. Allah has given you water to drink. Allah has given you food to eat. He's given you a home to live in. He's given you children. He's given you spouses. And you are thanking someone else. You are giving worship to something else. You are denying Allah His right to be worshipped. See, part of the attitude of Iman is being grateful and having gratitude. Shukr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That why do I worship Allah? Because not only does He deserve it, but I am in need to repay my debt. I'm in need. I've quoted before on this very member that every day you live, the account of debt between you and Allah, the account of debt that you owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continually racking itself up. It's continually getting deeper and deeper and deeper. You're going in debt second by second by second by second. 
And it's a debt that you will never, ever, ever pay off in this life. You can't. It's impossible. If you were given one million years to live on this earth, you wouldn't pay it off. Why? Because the longer you live, the more in debt you go. This is the reality. So what do we do as believers? We take opportunity. We take the opportunity that is afforded to us. Like the time when salah is to be offered. Like when the time zakah is to be paid. Like when the time of Ramadan approaches. When opportunity to do good is presented to us. When the opportunity to avoid sin is presented to us. We take the opportunity to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing that which He has asked. By doing that which He has asked. And in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, on the day of Qiyamah, when we stand in front of Him with this huge burden of debt, Insha'Allah will release us from the debts. He will forgive us for that which is owed to Him. He will forgive us for the mistakes that we made. He will forgive us for the sins that we committed. And He will enter us into the gardens of Jannah for eternity. You see, that's the transaction. That's the life of this world. So it should be a life of gratefulness. Just for good? What about the bad things? What about when your life isn't going so well? What about when hardship comes to you? Talked about this the last time I was here. What about when things aren't the way you planned? We've all had a bad day. We've all had bad times in our lives. We've all had negative experiences that we can remember for most of our lives. What about those times? Are those times times where we should become ungrateful? No. Those are the times when we should be most grateful. Most grateful. Because the Prophet ﷺ said the life of the believer is strange, it's odd, it's unique. Yes, I've repeated this. This is part of the deen. Things being repeated. That's why we pray five times a day, not once. He said the life of the believer is odd, it is strange, it is unique. And it's characteristic that it is khair in its entirety. Odd. You see, we're strange people. The ghuraba. Our lives are all good. You know, you hear people say it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Ask them that on a bad day. It's not, not all good today. But for the believer, for the Muslim, for the one who says that they possess iman, it's always good. Because if some good befalls the believer, what do they do? They become thankful. They show shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thank Him for it. There's a reason the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with alhamdulillah. All praise, all thanks, all gratitude belongs to Allah alone. There's a reason why Allah begins His book with that. There's a reason why we have to say that 17 times minimally every single day, reminding ourselves that all praise, all thanks, all gratitude belongs to Allah. But when the believer is given some hardship, some fitan comes in their life, some trials and tribulations, then the Prophet ﷺ said the believer has patience. They become patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if Allah was to take away everything, even if Allah was to take everything, like when Suleiman, everything was taken from him. And he was asked, what do you have to be thankful for? He said, I have hands and feet and eyes and ears. I still have things to be thankful for. When Ayyub alayhi salam, everything was taken from him. He was still thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because even if Allah had taken everything in this life, he was still here, he was still living, he was still breathing. So he had plenty to be thankful for. And in that situation, Allah then blesses and increases His slaves because of their patience in that hardship, so it becomes khair for them. That's only for you and me, by the way. It's only for you and me. Any hardship that befalls us, the Prophet ﷺ said, even to the pricking of a thorn, it is a relief from sin. It is either a means for Allah to alleviate your sin, and I don't know about you, but I know for me, I need as much alleviation from that sin as I can possibly get. As much as I can. Or, 
Allah is testing you in order to increase you in this life and in the next, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply wishes to give you his greatest gift and increase your ranks in akhirah in the next life. None of that is bad. So our life is always good. So we always have something to be thankful for. Not just once a month, not just once a week, not just once a year, but every single day. This is why the believers are commanded when they wake up, the first thing they are to say is Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah who has given me life after having caused me to die and to Him I shall return. This is how our lives begin every day. Reminding ourselves that we have something to be thankful for. This is an attitude that unfortunately the Muslim Ummah in, 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 in America specifically is not known for. We're not known for being the most grateful people and thankful people and praising people. This is not what we're known for. Why? Why is that? Because we have not truly comprehended that ourselves. We have not truly understood that no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter what Allah may be putting you through or putting this ummah through, we have more to be thankful for than any human beings walking on the face of this earth. Because not only are we alive like them, not only are we breathing like them, not only are we eating like them and drinking like them, but we have guidance. Allah has gifted us with the deen to know Him, to worship Him as He desires to be worshipped. And we have an opportunity with our lives. The Prophet ﷺ said there is no one who has the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the size of the grain of a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, but they will enter into Jannah insha'Allah ta'ala. So what are you, what do you have to complain about? Seriously, what do you have to complain about? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر لي ولكم فاستغفره إن غفر الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله the simple fact that you can say La ilaha illallah is enough for you to be grateful every single moment of your life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take it from someone who did not know that statement. 17 years ago today, I was not a Muslim. 17 years ago today, I had no concept of La ilaha illallah. If you'd have told me, I wouldn't even have known what it meant. I didn't know the purpose of my life. I didn't know who my Rabb was. I didn't worship him. I didn't thank him. 17 years ago today. Now here I am. Almost 17 years later in December. It'll be 17 years exactly. Being able to say to you, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I, I have no reason to complain. No reason to complain. Whatever hardship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts me through, I say alhamdulillah for it because He gave me a gift that I can't repay for. He gave me a gift that He wrote for me before I existed in a book that is only with Him that I would be guided to Islam. I can't repay that. This simple month of Ramadan with all of its beauty, with all of its power, with all of its extraordinary things that it gives us to me, is not significantly enough to repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given me. This is the attitude of gratefulness that inshallah ta'ala we can reinstill in this ummah, in the United States at least. Is this attitude that whatever I do, it's not enough. No matter how much I do, it's not enough. Because Allah deserves more. He deserves better. And I'm grateful for whatever little bit He gives me and the opportunity to worship him, I take granted, I take advantage of it, and I'm grateful for it. Lastly, but not truly, not leastly, be grateful for this month of Ramadan. You've seen it when others haven't. There are many people last year, last year, maybe a few months ago, waiting for the month of Ramadan to bring themselves back to nearness with their Rabb, get themselves right with Allah. And they didn't make it. They didn't make it. 
You've made it this far. Alhamdulillah. Show gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. For that. Be thankful to Allah that He has given us this month of Ramadan, an opportunity to fix ourselves, to heal ourselves, to prepare ourselves for the next 11 months till another Ramadan and make dua that you see another one. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Be thankful. Because this attitude of thankfulness will get you very far. It'll get you very far. Just being thankful to Allah as I finish. Just being thankful to Allah will take you so far. Are you worried? Do you have worries in your life? We all have worries. We all have stress. Learning to be thankful to Allah, that worry will just dissipate from your heart. You won't be worried. You won't be stressed. Because you will know that you worship a Rabb who is in control. The very fact that Allah says He is Rabb means He is in control. He designs the affairs of the heavens and the earth with no effort, with no effort. Allah controls this entire universe. Most of it we have no idea anything about it, it's understanding. But Allah is controlling every single bit of it with no effort at His part, none. It takes no effort from Allah. And we're worried about our little lives. We're thinking that Allah doesn't know what we're going through. Allah doesn't understand my struggles and my troubles. Wallahi, you're fooling yourself. You're confused. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything within His creation. And He has genuine, genuine, genuine concern for the affairs of those who believe. Wallahi, He does. After being Muslim for 17 years of my life, one thing I can say, and I close. I've been through ups and downs. I've had good times and bad times. But 17 years later, when I look back in retrospect and reflection, Allah has never disappointed me. Not once. Not once. Because I've always taken Him at His word. I've always said to my Creator that you guided me to Islam. You've taught me so many things about trusting in you and have tawakkul. Therefore, I'm just going to leave it in your hands when I can't control it anymore. I've never been disappointed. Wallahi, never been disappointed. And I'm thankful and grateful that I've been able to live that type of life. I've had less worries and stress, even though I've been through more hardship in 17 years of being a Muslim. Been through way more hardship in 17 years of being a Muslim than one year of being a non-Muslim. Of course, but I've not worried, had stress, been anxious over them because I know Allah is Rabb. Let's be thankful to Allah for what we do have. Because at any moment, He can take it all away. All away. Do not become ungrateful. Allah warns us that if you become ungrateful, inna adhabi la shadeed, indeed my punishment is severe. But if you become thankful and grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will increase you. I'll give you more. Just be grateful for what you do have. ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار <تصفيق> رب اغفر لنا ذنوبنا <تصفيق> وصرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصر القوم الكافرين ألهم أنصر إسلام المسلمين ألهم أنصر إسلام المسلمين ألهم أنصر وعز إسلام المسلمين في كل مكان رحم الرحيمين وأذل التشرك والمشركين سبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين